Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how to not get bummed out. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, how do you keep from getting bummed out when troubleshooting issues in a poorly documented, needlessly complex code base? Well, it's actually very simple. Um, you have to detach your sense of personal value and you also have to be personally mature enough to understand what you have in front of you. And then finally you have to sort of learn how to do a good job, uh, or rather what good how to structure a good work process to kind of sort this whole thing out. Let me explain this a little bit. So the first and foremost thing is to detach yourself from your personal identity from the horrible thing or like whatever you have in front of you because the problem with a lot of software developers and a lot of people in general is that they have they they, they see something that is to them bad or like they're forced to deal with something and so forth and they start complaining about how horrible it is and bad it is etc etc and they forget this tiny little thing and that is that this is what you're getting paid to do this is your job if you want a good example of this imagine being a cleaner or a clean, like a, a cleaning lady or someone who comes to clean someone's apartment house whatever imagine that they pay your firm for cleaning like a fraternity type of thing like there's been a big party there's mess upon mess upon mess like it's or cleaning hotels or something like that the messier the room is the longer the work is going to take and the more money you're going to make it's going to feel like shit because i mean humans you, you this is sort of the thing that i love about this it's the same thing you sort of it's the wake up call you get this is, it's actually, in a sense, I think it's actually healthy for you to go through this because we are living in a culture where so many people are sold a vision of how reality actually works. Like, you spend so much time being convinced how things are, like, it's just programming in general is the same thing, where you think that things are nice, you think things are easy, you are convinced that there are right ways of doing things, and then you go out into the real world and you realize that, you know what? Money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, people aren't on or don't have six packs and so forth and so forth. And it's actually pretty much the norm that code is shit, real shit, big steaming piles of it. And so, to not get bummed out is actually very simple. You just have to see this as another problem, and it starts by detaching yourself from feeling blamed or feeling like this is a problem because it's not a problem the code is really shit absolutely but your job is to fix this that's the whole the whole thing you're doing right it's like renovating a building or anything yeah sure this thing is really really ugly but i'm they, they're sort of paying you to fix it and so that brings us to the second thing which is to to be able to uh, to detach your sense of identity to not take this personally, to be able to start working on this thing without, you know, making it all about you, which is another part of it. Because a lot of software developers are immature children and behave as such. And a lot of them are very lazy and a lot of them try to do, which is actually not, it's not just software developers, a lot of people do this. You see, everybody wants things to be nice, and everybody wants things to happen. They just don't want to do it. And if you try to, if they're paid to do it, they will try to avoid doing it if they can do it. It's not because they're, you know, deciding necessarily that oh no, I'm not going to do this if I can avoid it. It's more pure and simple laziness. I have tons and tons and tons of problems with this, and I've always had the same thing. I promise you guys, the second you become a leader of software developers or some tech lead or something like that, and you you are forced to make sure that unit tests coverage is going up and like people are checking in, like time reporting and like all of this stuff, and you you will start to see something, and that is that people really don't care about anything 
apart from what is convenient to them. That is the, if you want to have people do things that they're not really so, yeah, they don't really care about it, that is like herding cats. And in the good old days, well, if we can even call it that, then there you could basically just give people a lot of consequences. But today, that's not really possible because today, in a extremely hypersensitive environment for a lot of us, uh, you can actually uh, not even say outright that someone has uh, should do uh, should do something or like you say that no, this was not good work. We need to fix this because they are sent th th that is an uh, an attack. It's a sign of aggression. So what you have to do is that you have to detach yourself from that this is some type of personal reflection on you because as I've said before to people, you can't control what the code looks like. It's not your fault. It's sort of like being a personal trainer. If somebody comes into you, into your office and says, I want to be have a six pack and that person is almost an Olympic athlete or like an Olympic athlete, well, that's going to probably be going to probably going to be pretty simple but if it's a morbidly obese person yeah, you can still get that person into shape you can still get them a sex pack it's just that it's going to take a whole fuck ton longer and the second you start thinking that it's a bad reflection on you that you can't solve this problem or that you so forth and so forth that's when things start to spiral because now it's about you again so what can happen is that you have other people who blame you for the state of the code base, and that's as, as I said, that's where you have to be mature and realize that the reason why you are being blamed for the state of this code base is because the people who own the code are paying you to fix it are too stupid to understand what the situation is, and that's where you, at the last step, you have to know how to structure a migration strategy, a, a paying back, it's sort of like an accountant or some person who sets up a you know, a, a more structured model for a household or someone who has been like they're deep in depth or something like that. You have to be the voice of reason and experience and sort of set up a plan. And I have done this so many times that you can give me the ugliest, horrible, most undocumented thing that you can possibly imagine because, guys, I have worked with code bases like this. It's actually one of the reasons why I got fairly good at front end development. Well, it's not just front end development, but because they actually put me, I, I had, I've had jobs where people have given up. People have actually quit the job because they could not deal with the issue at hand. So they pull me in and I fix it. And I have fixed it every single time. It's not perfect by any means, but it is a whole, a whole lot better because it's actually not that difficult to set up a working structure for migration of code and so forth. It's just that you have to be able to do that. And on average, my friends, software developers don't know how to do this. And that is something that they should learn. And this is why I tell people that if you want to be a master level software developer, you have to learn not just how to write really amazing software, you have to learn how to deal with bad software and how to turn that into good software and when you know how to do all these three three things i, I it's it's like nothing it i don't I, it, personally i don't even feel anything when i see really really horrible code it's just another problem it's just okay yeah this is probably going to have to be fixed i just go through my list and continue it's like it's does not really matter to me so what i want you to take away from this is that the way that i work and deal with being bummed out by really shitty software is that I might get annoyed at people because I expect them to do a better job than they do because uh, unfortunately I am still in that state. I haven't reached the black belt level of Zen or th and things like that and other people's stupidity uh, and incompetence ke still at many many times keep me up at night. I can, it's very rare that I feel uh, that I can't sleep because of uh, of anything besides that. I can get really excited about a project and so forth, but many times when I stay up, up at night and can't sleep, it is because I have to deal with people who are too dumb to do their job properly or who just don't care about doing a good job. And that is taxing, but when it comes to code and things like that, I mean, 
if somebody has made a lot of mistakes or there's a really shitty code base, it's really not just another problem. And I promise you, the second you learn how to do these three things, number one, make sure that you just like you detach yourself emotionally from the job. It's as being a cleaner. You're being paid to fix this. And it doesn't matter how ugly it is, it's just going to take longer. And that's, in if you think about it rationally, that means more money for you. And the second thing is attach your sense of identity, science of pride and all that stuff because it's not your fault that this mess is the way it is. So if somebody's unhappy with that, then they can go fuck themselves or get somebody else to do it because they have clearly misused or like it's like as I said, it's like a really fat person. If they want to be in shape in like for their wedding, which is like four weeks from now, that's on them. That's their problem. It's not your problem. You can help them get into shape, but not in four weeks, etc. etc. Lastly, make sure that you learn how to transfer bad code to good code. Learn the 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 secrets that are necessary in order to make software good. Because it's not magic guys. It's like, as I said, it's like being a cleaner or an engineer or anything like that. You have to understand the, the elements that make up a good solution and how to set those things in place. Just as a security expert has to know what type of practices to add into a company's work process in order to stop hackers or, or accidents in the workplace and so forth and so forth. It's the same thing. It's not magic. Have a great day.